the assassination of Hassan Nasrallah in uh, Beirut, right? So when that happened initially, I was like, whoa. So they did take him out. And not only did they take out Hassan Nasrallah, they took out huge number of the top Hezbollah leadership, right? So I was like, okay, what's going on? How come, how come they would have all met in the same location in Beirut, right? Because if you're at war, there's no way you're going to bring your top leaders, all of them together in the, in the same location. I've known family that when they're traveling, they, their mother, father, this is way back in the day, mother, father, uh, son, daughter, they, would, they wouldn't take one plane. They would take two planes. Father and son would go together. Mother and daughter would go together just in case. Some people would go this far. Just in case they had a plane crash, accident, the whole family wouldn't get wiped out, right? If families do this, you would assume people in high position of power that are waging war, they wouldn't come together under the same roof, right? But they all did. So what was going on? Some people were saying, oh, they were stupid to do this. Why did they do this? What's going on? You know, people are trying to figure it out. Those who try to understand why certain things have happened. And the Iranian, I believe, ambassador mentioned this. And the Iranian president also mentioned this. And this is coming out now in the last few days. That supposedly, they all got together to discuss the peace treaty that the United States and Israel had offered the uh, ceasefire and the peace agreement that they offered, right? Or in more regards, the ceasefire, which the United States had basically uh, told Hezbollah that Israel had accepted. So the reason the Hezbollah leadership with Hassan Nasrallah, they got together in one location, was to discuss the intricacies of this peace agreement ceasefire agreement that the United States had stated that had been accepted by Israel so they just had to hash out the little deals on it right the the you know make sure all the I's were dotted and all the T's were crossed that's why they all got together right and that makes sense now what Israel did with the aid of the United States so it's really Israel United States did they assassinated that leadership, right? So they blatantly lied. I mean, obviously, you got to be a moron to believe the United States government or Israel regarding anything, right? Regarding anything, right? But they lied to, to such a level that they pretended that they wanted peace, that they had accepted peace and cease fire which is what everyone in the region wants except israel and the neocons and the zionists and the born again christians every eight billion people plus billion people in the world 99.9 .9 percent of them want peace these are the people that are against it the united states neocons zionists and Christ born again christians and the hardcore fanatics in israel and the israelis they don't want peace, right? They want to bring the United States. They lied to such a level that they brought all the Hezbollah leadership under one location and then they assassinated them, right? Now, you tell me if you're in negotiations, you're at war, you're adversaries, if you're playing a board game, do this. What will you do? What is your purpose from that moment on until the end of your days or until the end of their days? It's to annihilate them, right? What a effing mistake it was for the United States and Israel to lie to the Hezbollah leadership, which is guaranteed this is known by all, all countries in that region and the world now right guaranteed russia also knew about it right guaranteed russia also that's why they were so pissed off at israel and the united states for 
assassinating the Hezbollah leadership in such a way. Why? Why they? And by the way, the Hezbollah leadership got together in a residential area in a major bunker. They wouldn't have done that if they thought that the war was continuing. So United States and Israel, they were willing not only to lie to their adversary that they wanted peace and escalate the situation to a level where pubic hair away from World War III, they were also willing to kill hundreds of civilians that are living in those apartment buildings, the four blocks that they leveled, right? And they continue to bomb, right? Horrendous, horrendous. Russia knows it, China knows it, Iran knows it, Syria knows it, Lebanon knows it, Yemen knows it, Egypt knows it. Every person, every country involved in this conflict now knows what they did. And there's going to be hell to pay for what they did. This is a, this is a suicide move on the side of Israel and the United States. Israel is not going to be a, it's, it's going to be a pale reflection of what it was two years ago 10 years from now and Israel is taking the Western world down with it those of us that are living in the Western world we're gonna to have to make a decision are we willing to sacrifice everything our societies our economies the future of our children everything everything right so-called democracy if we ever had it and hand it over to tyrants and psychopaths to go down with the zionist neocon boarding and christian ship or are we going to cut this these people loose and go f you right what we have to decide what we're about to do and that's what i gathered in the last few days just reading everything i've read and watching podcasts interviews and stuff like this it's the only explanation for why all the hezbollah leadership would have come together in one location and in beirut of all places right they came together to dot the i's cross the t's t's in a ceasefire peace negotiation that israel and the united states reneged on Right. in the process killing hundreds of innocent people right now as of two days ago i think the death toll in beirut has been or in Le lebanon has been over three thousand right in gaza we're well over two hundred thousand now right so united states and israel the western world and israel are are revealing their hand this is a war of annihilation not good not good right now right now they're waging a war of annihilation with iran right we'll talk about this tomorrow during a mapping stream iran russia china north korea yemen syria lebanon okay nato the combined western forces could not take could not defeat russia with the help of let's say iran and north korea right and i'm including israel in that israel was helping ukraine so was turkey right they couldn't defeat russia 90 percent russia some people say north korea was supplying weapons artillery whatever let okay let's assume they were let's say iran was supplying drones they were drones so with five percent help from iran five percent help from north korea the combined forces of nato couldn't defeat russia in ukraine an army that they had trained for eight years armed to the teeth right are we out of our minds supporting genocidal zionist fanatics and they're boarding in christian little fucking puppets and the neocon masters that are trying to wage war everywhere in the middle east against everybody else the global majority wow especially the way we have been behaving that there is no honor in the way 
the Western world and Zionist Israel have been waging war. There isn't, right? They have lied, they have cheated, they have assassinated, they have mass slaughtered civilians. On the flip side, Hezbollah, Iran, Hamas, they have gone out of their way not to kill civilians. Amazing times, amazing times. Salute.